Welcome again to another episode of Laugh Your Way to the Top. If you can't tell, it's a thousand degrees in in the studio today, uh, in the factory. Uh, it's warm summer day, and uh, we are recording another new podcast centric on marketing and door to door. Um, I'm your host, Austin Fain, and joining me today is Zach Kane. Um, he is one of our favorite people at the company. Um, he's done a lot of good things over the last couple of years. Um, he's an enjoyable person to talk to. Um, if you want to have more questions, um, you can reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, anything like that, and uh, we'll go over any of that stuff. Zach, welcome to the podcast, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. It's, you it's a pleasure to be here. First I'm, podcast. I'm excited. Yeah. First podcast. First podcast. Hopefully not the last podcast. Hopefully not the last. I don't, I don't ruin it for you. Um, it's so hot in here. So hot. It's been so hot outside. I actually just got back from West Lafayette, went to a Purdue game, baking in the sun, got a little bit of a sunburn. That was today. No, that was yesterday. Okay, you went yesterday. It was yesterday. I wore, made a mistake, wore two shirts, so I had my Drew Brees Purdue jersey on, and then I had a shirt underneath, felt like I was, you know, hot boxing my body in the sun. Yeah. But, yeah, very hot outside right now. Who won? Uh, the bad guys. Uh, sucks. Everybody watched games this weekend. Yeah, it's just nice that, that football's back. For anybody who does follow football, football's back. It's nice. Last weekend without the NFL, so that's exciting. You don't count preseason? I do, I do watch preseason. So it's been back for a minute. It has been back. But we have a little bit of time off in between preseason and now. So, you know, now it's officially back starting next fair, week. Fair, fair. Um, I've been wanting to have you on for a minute, but you're a super busy guy with family and life and all the other good stuff. And at the end of the day, uh, from working a shift, you don't want to, like, come in here and, like, talk for two hours, go home and sleep. Yeah, well, you know, most of my day is talking to people. Yeah. So that is pretty much what my day, you know, summarizes. What do you what do you do for Perfect Steel Solutions? Uh, right now for Perfect Steel Solutions, I go pretty much I wouldn't say door to door to every single door, but um, basically I set up free quotes for the company for roofs, gutters, soffit fascia, and windows, and uh, pretty much personalizing to each individual I talk to, and you know, talking to people. Yeah, so you talk to people for a living. Get yeah. them interested in what we what we do here. Exactly. Okay, and you set up people for estimates, and you've been pretty successful in that over the last couple of years. It's been a not a slow burn to the top, but definitely a steady rise um, to being consistent. When I look at a lot of the marketers that we have um, and a lot of marketers uh, online that I'm a part of a lot of these groups and I follow along all these trends, and and what I've what I found mostly is that there's so many inconsistencies. You might have a good month and then next month dies out and the next week might be good and the next week dies out. How have you found to be consistent in your work through a week to week, month to month sort of deal? You've never had a zero month. Um, you've never had maybe every month is the top month, but you've never had a zero month. How do you, how do you either plan for that, work towards not having that, well, I mean, that that's that's a good question because I get that actually a lot. From, I bet you do. I mean, it's very common. I mean, we have super, super talented people that work here. We do. And they still struggle week to week, month to month. Absolutely. With and being that's, consistent, not making money. They make money And every that's month. more so like, you know, a lot of people come, you know, and we have a, a workout facility mm -hmm. here. You know, people come in here, work out their bodies. But, you know, the brain is also a muscle to me too. And, you know, working out the brain every single day, to master your craft. At the end of the day, it is a craft. Just like working out your bicep or tricep, it is a craft to be able to do that and to sculpt it the way you want it to be sculpted. You know, some processes go a little bit slower, some go faster, but that is one thing that I really struggled with when I first started is really high highs, really low lows. Like everyone else. Yeah, big waves, big waves. And I remember having a meeting with one of my favorite people, Jimmy, and uh, he was like, how can we, you know, I, I know what you're capable of doing, but how can we make those waves like this into more like this? Right. And with a steady rise. So that was one thing I started working on really early, early 
And I think it was more so with me. I can't speak for everybody, but more so with me, just getting comfortable, settling in and getting comfortable and dialing in. Me, meaning what? How do you get comfortable? Well, I mean, one of the things is, you know, when when I first started working, I think the first month, you know, we have the, what is called the Champions Club. Mm-hmm. And that has been discussed on a previous podcast where, you know, you hit a certain number, you know, you're you're treated pretty much like royalty. Um and the first month of the company I did managed to hit Champions Club and it was super exciting because I've never experienced anything like that before. And it was it was totally You've never been in sales before. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. This was this was completely brand new to me. It was right. actually uh, a big decision for me to do yeah. something. You did like talking this. for a living, but not sales. No, no. It was it was completely different. Um and I can kind of get into that here too. Yeah, but but when when I uh when I first started, when I hit $100,000 that first month, it was kind of crazy. Um, I kind of got lucky in the beginning because I remember the first guy, um, you know, I, I, I pitched him and it wasn't really anything spectacular or anything like that, but I offered him a free quote. He took it and this guy ended up winning a lawsuit or something like that. And next thing I know, it was my first cash deal and it was super exciting. And that month I hit 100000 And um, after that, it was pretty much high highs and low lows, but for me, it was getting comfortable and settling, settling in. And what I mean by that is when I hit the highs, um, it wasn't more so laying off the gas or getting comfortable or content. And, you know, that is one thing mentally when, when I talk about working out the brain, um, where if you have a great week or a great day and the next day you have a terrible day or a terrible week the next week, you know, it's it's a it's a mental grind. It's not physical. It's a mental grind. Yeah. And just showing up every single day and putting in the same effort the day before, even if you failed or not, yeah, it that's goes the other half of that. It goes a showing long up way. Is one thing like most people can show up. Exactly. But then putting the same energy of when you were on exactly. that high and everything like that, even when you're coming off of a loss, like that's a lot of things that people struggle with mentally. And that has to go with like pretty much all sales all around the world, whether you sell cars or vacuum cleaners or right, right. houses or whatever. It really does. Energy does go a long way. I mean, anybody can show up on time. Anybody can show up and and, and be there. Um, but there's also a thing, you know, I, I like to try to stay in the present of where I'm at. So when I'm out there, you know, try to stay in the present of where I'm at. I can't carry the night before me or whatever happened yesterday or last week or what just happened that morning into my day. I have to constantly stay in the present. And if I can manage to stay in the present and dial the present in to whatever my whatever I'm doing, and that's you know talking to people, um, personalizing, because I do, I, I'm the type of guy who likes to get to know some people if I have the opportunity to when I talk to them. And it's fun to me, but you know, you also have the counter to that too. Um, but just, deep, just being present, just being present and, and constantly putting that effort in and bringing that energy um, every single day. I think that is one of the hardest things yeah, to do. Sure. That is one of the hardest things, but it is, it is the most rewarding thing to do. Um, it's been successful for you, at least. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's, it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. I, yeah. I, I love it. That's nice. Um, so in this rise, you've seen a lot of people come and go um, in this industry. What are some things if people are thinking about getting into this industry and like starting this 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 kind of job? What are some things that you think that if you give advice to someone who's like on the fence, be like, "Wow, that sounds pretty awesome." Only work six hours a day and and go travel and and talk to people for a living. What are some people? What are some things that you could tell them like, "Hey, if you're thinking about this and you have this these kind of repertoire that you have this kind of you know skill sets, you should probably think about doing something like this." Right, right. Well, for me, you know, I had a before, before I even started doing this, I was a, um, a state caseworker. Mm-hmm. My youngest client was 16. He was adopted from the UK. My oldest was 50, who I helped kind of get off the streets. And um, for me, you know, it was a rewarding job to be able to be there and, and to help bless other people. But the pay wasn't that great. No. So there's probably a lot of people out there who, will, who were kind of my, in my shoes were like, you know, I like what I do or I don't like what I do. But, you know, I need something more financially rewarding or I need more time and financially rewarding. Because you want to not only just take care of other people, you want to take care of home base, too. Exactly. Exactly. And so you, can't, you can take care of other people in social work, but it's hard to take care it's of. It's very home base. hard. It's very hard because 
when you're in that line of work, you know, you also want to help take care of that uh, or, you know, who, whoever you're taking care of. And that can also mean some financial, you know, things Burden, as yeah. well. Um, and me being, you know, who I am, I, I love doing that for people, but it can get hard at times. It can get hard at times, especially if you're not making, you know, the en enough to be able to do that, to be, be where it's rewarding to yourself and your family as well. So it, it was harder to balance that out. Um, but for me, when I first jumped into this and, you know, it was kind of like a leap of faith. It mm -hmm. really was a leap of faith for me because this was completely different this, than anything I've ever done before. It, it was, it was really weird. It was really weird at first. And, um, but when I made that decision, I was already fully committed to it. And I think that is one thing that anybody who's looking to get started in this type of industry or work, um, if you're jumping in, you have to have faith. You have to have faith when you jump and you walk into that new door because it's a new door you're opening. It's a new chapter in your life. And you have to look at it like that. But you also have to be committed. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, you have to take it seriously. You can't just come into it and, you know, working a nine to five. Sure, you can you can come in to a nine to five. Yeah, you can phone it in. And yeah, exactly. As long as you show up. Yeah. And you work, I mean, you're still getting, you know, you're still getting paid for the hourly work. Maybe it's not as much as you want to make, but, you know, you can show up um, here with, with what you're, what you're doing, what I do. Um, you have to, you have to be willing to take it seriously because it's only, it's only as serious as you take it mm -hmm. um, because you are pretty much working for everything that you work for. Yeah. Which is exciting. Yeah, you, you, it, it, you it's eat what you kill for sure. It, exactly. It's exciting if you do take it seriously and um, you are present with, with what you're doing within what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't have a downside to it too, if you don't, if you aren't willing to bring the energy and if you aren't willing to jump into it and you're pretty hesitant and you know, you're half in half out, it, it can be hard. So if you're at home and you're listening to this and you're going to a job where you have lots of energy and you have a good motivational thing to wake up and grind and then it's still just an hourly based thing where no matter how hard you work, you're still making the same amount of money. If you feel like you could take your talents and talk to people uh, and go out there and get people interested in metal roofing, soft facial windows, gutters, all that good stuff. Um, then this might be something for you or any line of work. There's a, there's a few different companies. I mean, whether they, you know, bathroom remodels or they're doing decks or anything like that, there's a bunch of companies out there that you can go work for and get your feet wet. Um, but instead of just making that hourly grind. It but gosh, dude, it is amazing to see how many different types of people with different personalities and different backgrounds and different walks of life. Oh, I love that. Like when I've, I've been in interviewing for uh, representatives um, for the past – four or five weeks, I had two slots open up for in sales. And the question I always get is like, what's the people like, you know, are they a bunch of tall, handsome, greased back hair, you know, <laughs> suave, muscular people? Like, no, like my best dude, he's five foot three. He looks like a garden gnome. He's a wizard. Um, he collects Pokemon cards. And that's, I mean, that's him. I mean, he's the number one guy. I don't have any of that stereotypical greasy right. used car salesman kind of people. That's not who works here. Right. And if you look at the team top to bottom, it really is just different from top to bottom. It is high school all over again. There is just everyone that you can think of. We got the choir kids and we got the geeks. We got the nerds. We got the jocks. You know, we got people playing Dungeons and Dragons. We got people playing professional sports. We have. That's right. Everybody. And it's so weird because they can all be good in their own right. They find a way to make it work. Exactly. Like the autistic kid that, that works here. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like, and that's what I was going to say. It's, yeah. It's really cool because you you have just so many different personalities and people from different backgrounds who enjoy just so many different things. And, um, you know, they, they make it work. They do good for themselves. And it's amazing to see that I, I personally believe, you know, I know, you know, there are people out there who believe this is not for everybody. And, and everything like that, or anybody can't, everybody can't do it. Yes, that technically may be true, but anybody can do it if you put your mind to it. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody can do this, whether or not you're going to take the success to another level and change your life, that's a whole different thing entirely. Like, right. you know, th at the end of the day, you can treat this as a job. You know, you can come in and do your work and exactly. see how the cards, you know, come. Um, some days you're going to win, some days you're going to lose. Um, if you're just an average, no talent type of, 
you know, and then just working your normal hours and not going above and beyond, you can just make money and live. And I think you just hit it on the nail on the head. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who, who do come into this industry doing um, some sort of marketing who treat it like a job. And I feel like that is one big thing you can treat this as if you really do want to take it to the next level. Yeah. If you really do want to get to new heights and to be at a success, a success that yeah. you haven't reached before, yeah. um, you have to take it as an opportunity. And it's proven. Like it's, we're almost creeping up on 2,000 projects. That's amazing. 2,000. That's amazing. You got to think about that for a second. I, I, it hit me the other day because I don't ever think about that kind of stuff. I'm not really a numbers guy. And, and on a broad strokes, I'm a week-to-week -week dude. Um, I don't ever think about, like, how much we've done or how much we'll do. Well, that's amazing to week. me because last time I heard, um, we were over 1,000. And I had no idea where we were, we're at. We're 1,800 until, plus right now. That's amazing. And so when I, when I look at it, I bought 1,000 perfect steel air fresheners the other day like i got them sitting there over my desk and they're pretty sweet they got our logos they smell like a barber shop they smell like cedar <laughs> they smell like new car they smell like and i was like wow i think i'm going to send them to all of my previous customers just i'll go to the ups find a way to like mass send these out and send one to all of our previous customers and i got thinking i got a thousand that's not even enough, <laughs> not even for almost half to send to all of our previous customers. Six years, 2,000 projects? I mean, that's insane. It really is. I mean, is. that's a huge amount, 2,000. It really is. You know? And you've got to see, you know, the six years of constant growth with the company. Yeah. I've been here for two years. Yeah. And it's, it's grown so much in it's the last so two years. It's so much. From eight to ten, like it's just it's just a it's a nut it's a nuts deal, and, and all of it comes from marketing this way. All of it, all of it. I mean, the bet in the beginning of the days, I did try Angie's List and Home Advisor and all that kind of stuff. We did less than a hundred jobs and all that kind of stuff, and I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and all that kind of stuff. So that didn't work out. But all of it comes from this way of marketing. It's proven to go to the people that have a need to catch them at the right time and uh to to work with them where they're at like it it just works and so to like for me when i got into it, it was like who do, who does this <laughs> i didn't really believe in it i just knew it worked and so you know and then through you know grinding and changing stuff around to make it better for the employees and and, and better for the company we find like a sweet spot I had um, Sabran on a past, past, past podcast, and um, one of his biggest thing was uh, he's like, dude, I don't know how to get this off the ground. I'm still the owner. He started a roofing company, and he's the owner. He's also the canvasser. He's the salesperson, uh, all that front of the house stuff. So he's got all. people back of the house stuff. He's got like a project manager, and he's got like an office girl. Um, but he's like, dude, I can't get anybody to work out in canvassing and i was like well let me see what you're doing and one of them is he's dressing up the indeed thing to be like not canvassing do you want to be a brain ambassador do you want to be blah blah i'm like first of all you're just lying to people at that point like you need to be like more direct like you're going door to door like it's gonna happen secondly like he had him on there i was like what are you paying your canvassers and he's like well if they say they've done it before or whatever i'm paying them 20 bucks an hour I'm like bro I was like, no, like if they're proven, whatever, do, do something like that. But like after a while, but like, what's the, what's the benefit for them to get you more stuff? They get, they make their $20 an hour. They don't last a week and a half because he doesn't have no money to pay him. He's starting from the bottom. So like after a thousand dollars a week paying somebody, he's done. He can't pay him anymore if they didn't produce anything. And I'm like, dude, you can't, you have to make them go set appointments to make money and you got to make it big you can't just make it like 50 bucks to set them like you <laughs> right. have to make it big so that they try to get as many as possible and he was completely backwards and he goes i don't think your your methodology works i was like listen bro i was like almost two thousand roofs windows projects or whatever like it does work but you're just doing it just ass backwards i mean like there's a way to do that and he's been successful in his thing and i go well, why do you think you're being successful at the door being the only canvasser and the only salesperson 
And he's like, well, I mean, you know, we make money. I make money when I so I don't make anything when I go out. I go, so why would you expect anybody else to do anything other than that? But that's what makes so special, like what this company has achieved and the time frame that it has, you know, not knocking on anybody else out there because there's a lot of great companies mm -hmm. and offer great services and, you know, have great just family mindsets and, re, you know, love people. But what makes this company is so special? I mean, it's almost like, you know, I use the word exclusive and not everybody uses that word, but I do use it because it it's amazing how, I mean, we're coming up on 2000 projects and we're a company that doesn't throw our name on a billboard Nothing. Or Never had a, a television commercial. No, nah, I think I, I don't think I had one. No? I don't think I had one. But I mean, it's... We designed one. I don't think I ever sent it out. Okay. This is going to be like 30 grand. Oh, wow. Wow. But that's, that's what makes it so special is that money, you know, instead of putting it into things like that, it goes back to people who are... Well, I'd wanting, rather do that. Yeah, yeah. When I look at the... When I heard that one of my competitors spent $600,000 a year, I'm sure it's more now. This was two or three years ago. Um, six hundred thousand dollars a year on television, and I'm like, man, for six hundred thousand, I could have like a bunch of marketers, and I feel like I would definitely get more leads. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong, but like I would think I definitely get more leads doing that than on television. Maybe for brand recognition, it'd be way better, and you'll get more in the future for doing that kind of stuff. But. No, I did, you know what I did? I didn't do television. I did the internet stuff. So, like, if you were on Hulu, if you were on okay. any of that stuff, it would come up at the, you know, like, when you're watching a video yeah, on YouTube yeah. or something like that, and they have, like, a little... Little ad. Little ad at the bottom. That's what I was doing through Comcast. So, it was kind of a television thing, but it was through the internet-based stuff, which I thought more people were doing anyway. So, I was like, let me get it on that. Zero. But most of the company's success has been through believing in people. Yeah. Yeah, everyone here is... Everyone here is smarter or more successful than the next person. Um, and, and that's almost kind really of what cool. helped me take the leap of faith into doing what I'm doing is because I got that sense that, you know, when I came across, you know, Jimmy on a previous podcast who, you know, ultimately was my first impression of, you know, Perfect Steel Solutions. It's usually most people's first impression. <laughs> right, right. You know, it was more so him believing in me. And that's kind of transitioned into how I look at it. Anybody who comes into the company, you know, I want to believe in them because that's exactly how the company has grown. That's exactly how we have gotten so many projects. It's just, you know, putting your time into people and believing in people and helping people. You know, it, it, it is amazing when you go to an approach like that. And that's kind of the approach I go to when I go and talk to people out, out there every single day. And I'm on that grind. Yeah. Um, I have the mindset. Passion. Yeah, yeah, passion to help people out. And that stems top to bottom, you know, through through people I talk to um, every single day out there, you know, um, just offering a free quote for whatever it is, windows, roof, gutters, soffit fascia, the whole nine yards that we do. Um, I want to help them. Yeah. And I know we can help them if, if they give us that opportunity. So I approach that door every single time in that in that mentality. And uh, it's really cool because top to bottom, we carry that same energy and it's, you know, it's it's to the point where I fully believe in what, you know, was believed in me um, to where, you know, I want to, I want to help other people do that too. Yeah. And want to have fun doing it. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like there, I don't know if you came to the fantasy draft um, the other night. I did. Okay. And we did, we do fun stuff like that. Uh, we do fun stuff. Like I've shut it down before. We've done Dungeons and Dragons in the conference room before. Um, we've done Cubs game uh, recently this year. Um, that was fun. We've that was cool watching you guys there having a good time with that. We've done a lot of charity stuff. I'll get tickets to send people to the Colts game or something like that. Ten We've caps done game recently. Ten caps. How was how'd that go? It was really fun. Ten caps is a local uh, baseball organization, um, and we got sweet tickets. So I, I donated money to a charity um, for families that need a place to stay while their children are in the hospital, and uh, donated so much money that you get sweets to this baseball game it was it was a blast and um one of the things that um what what we wanted to happen was we wanted all the tickets to be used and uh we came close to being able to use them all and it was a really cool experience because 
you know, um, some of us brought people we love and people we know. And it was just one big, you know, big happy family with the, everybody, you know, who went within our company and everybody they brought. It was one, one thing that was really cool to me was we had a guy who um, pretty new here and is doing absolutely extraordinary. I mean, he, he's been killing it. And uh, I remember him bringing a foreign exchange student with his sister and she's never seen anything like baseball before. She didn't even know baseball was a thing. She was the foreign exchange. Team. Yes, okay. yes. So she didn't. She didn't even know baseball was a thing. And I think she came from uh, from Germany. Okay. And uh, one thing she said in the suite, looking into the outfield, because I think she counted six or seven American flags from just the uh, you know the, the horizon. She's like, "Why do you guys have so many American flags hanging everywhere?" She was like, this is just bizarre to me. USA, baby. <laughs> so it was it was really cool. Um, just kind of like seeing her take it all in for the first time. Um, because we have a lot of things that, you know, we're we're used to or we're accustomed to. Yeah. Um, but not even like it was just cool being in a suite. Just it, it was I've absolutely actually never been to one. I oh, mean, they're, I re- they're really nice. I did one for a uh, New Year's Eve ball drop, but it was not like a baseball game and stuff. So I'd never I've never seen it. Um and then we did like the buses to Dave and Buster's and Top Golf. That, did that was one. Fun that too. was sweet. Um, I, that's the stuff that that I like to do when everyone else is having fun, because we do expect a lot of work to be done and a lot of proficiencies, and we hold ourselves to a high standard. But then also, you know, giving back and trying to make make some memories while we do it. I don't want it to seem like, man, I worked here for five years. All I did was get a paycheck. No. We've we've gone to Chicago before. We've gone to Indy before. We've you know we're doing baseball games. We're doing. So I want something to have some kind of memories. That um, Dave and Buster's and that was sick. And Top Golf was a huge that was huge sick. thing. Yeah, that was sick. And it was it was fun. It was like five year anniversary. We just had our six year anniversary in July. Um, Ten year anniversary. I'm thinking about doing a, a like a festival, like a carnival. Not like a fire festival, but like doing a <laughs> doing a carnival where I bring like midway, like when I bring like Ferris wheels and roller coasters and like spinny stuff and like the games that you can win, oh, wow. prizes, all that stuff, and put it on property. That would be legit, and have it only for Perfect Steel and Perfect Steel friends and family. Ten year. That, that, would, that, that would be. It's probably gonna cost like a couple hundred thousand dollars, but I think that would be like <laughs> really dope. That would be really, really cool. Just a one day all out Boston well, everything, festival with music, everything, music, fucking live, live music, and everything stage. has been so legit. Yeah. And when I hear you know you say that, and you're like, "Oh, this is gonna be legit." Yeah. It's like, how much I, more legit can we get? I tried to pull it <laughs> off last year, but I always do things like last minute. It's one of my worst qualities. Is like I'm a real in the moment. I like to handle fires. It's the way my mind works. Is like, what's the first fire, second fire, third? I don't go like. Next week, I'm going to do X. I don't do that. And so, like, it became, like, three months ahead of time. Like, let me see what it is to get a carnival here for, you know, like a summer festival or something like that. And couldn't make it happen. But but in two years, I can start planning that and make it happen. I think that would be so wheat. That, that's, a, that's a big 10-year. And open it up to all of our customers, too, by the way. Oh, wow. Be customers, employees, and friends and family. That, that's huge. Be dope. That that would be dope. It's pretty easy because like we have all of the customers' information. I mail out tickets for that, and then all the employees stuff. Send them out tickets and stuff. Take tickets at the gate. Set to go. I'll gate this whole place off all the way from around our three four acres we here at the at the facility and just have it have it out, man. And that that's that's pretty cool too, yeah. you know. Because when you're talking about a customer standpoint, you're like, cool, yeah, you have a lifetime transferable warranty on top of your roof, a nice new roof from us or windows from us or whatever the case may be. And it's not like, cool, you guys are just a customer now. Yeah. Like, we appreciate you guys, you know, believing in our product, our services, and, you know, going through us. And that, that's that's really cool. That would be dope. That is cool. That would be dope. And I think, like, a lot of the money stems from I put a certain percentage back on every project to handle those services um but we never use it like we we hardly ever have any issues because it's like a lifetime system right whether you get windows or roofing or whatever it's pretty much forever and it's done you know so like using that money that i don't use from five years ago and 
putting it into this giant festival to give them something for their money. They bought a lifetime warranty they never used. Well, it's good to have just in case, but you know, like be cool to like just get some free tickets now and then. Yeah, like, that would be, be cool. You know, because it, you know, just as you know, every every employee is valued here. You know, so is every every customer out there too. Yeah, we our turnover rate's so low in almost everything, but the marketing stuff. Like it's nuts. Like I've had more than half the people have been here more than three years total in the company. That's incredible. Which is which is which is nuts. Yeah. Like just we don't lose people along the way, and I think part of that's constant growth. If you have if you have growth, it's a little bit easier to keep people as they move up and and do things. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty exciting for me to watch people like have have families and buy houses and and, and it's it's been exciting to be yeah. a part of it. Yeah, it's been really cool, and uh, just to I gotta figure out a way to make it bigger and better every year. Always look forward to Christmas parties and stuff. No, I've not yet been to one of those. Why didn't you come last year? You sick? I went to Puerto Rico. Oh, that's right, you went with Dad Puerto Rico. Yep. So my dad, little story about my dad. So my, my dad ends up going to Fort Myers, Florida, before, you know, the hurricane and everything happened down there where it ended up getting decimated and, you know, just a pretty sad instance. But uh, the year before that happens, my dad went down to Fort Myers Beach, Florida, got a little, it was, it was like a little shack. And this place only could s sleep one person max, one person max. And um, I get a call. First, after the first night down there, my dad got rushed to the hospital. What happened was, is you know, he, he made a little bit too many friends down there first night, birthday night, and uh, was down there on the beach, got invited on somebody's boat, went out in the boat, didn't realize the water was low tide, and the water was, uh, you know, you can't really see in the dark. So someone threw a football. My dad, God bless him, he loves to play football. He's like a little child in a grown, man, grown man's must be body. a big-ass boat to throw a football on. Well, yeah, so he jumped off the front of this boat, and uh, um, pretty much jumped in the water, not realizing how shallow it was, and snapped his ankle. And immediately got rushed to the hospital first night down there. And um, I get a call, and uh, I'm actually out on the job the next day while I'm getting a call. And I'm in some small little town, and he's like, hey, son, can you, can you come down to, uh, to Florida and you know, stay with me, help me out? And we're supposed to go to the Purdue-Tennessee Bowl game and the Music City Bowl in Nashville on the way home. And I'm like, Dad, how, how are we going to do this? And, you know, all else failed. I, I went down there and um, I, I stayed with him in the small little shack, with air mattress, Sick. hardly, hardly any room, no Sick. room, no walking room, none at all. And um, yeah, so that's, that's why, uh, that's why I missed the, uh, I think the first Christmas party, actually. Um, that was the first one. Yeah. So the second one. You so that was about. actually during Christmas. I spent Christmas down there in Florida. Um and my dad, believe it or not, still in a boot and in a cart, still was playing catch on the beach with kids. I'm like, dude, you are a different breed. Nuts. You're not just laying there, kicked, kicked up, and you know, um, you know, inflating your, you know, high rising your foot to keep it, you know, healing. No, he's out there just carting around with the, a freshly snapped ankle. There's something about people that live in, in <laughs> Fort Wayne that want to go to Florida so badly. Oh, it's crazy. It, it, it really is. Like, when you go down to Florida during certain times of the year, you it's like... You can meet people from your hometown. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's nuts. It's like a hometown reunion. Yeah. And then you went to Puerto Rico for like two weeks or something crazy. Yeah, two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks in Puerto Rico. Two and a half weeks last year. So my dad wanted to go to Fort Myers again, but the hurricane happened. He he wanted to reschedule to somewhere else in Florida. I've been to uh, Puerto Rico once prior, and I was like, Dad, let's go to Puerto Rico. You've never been there. Let's go. And he was like, well, was like, all right. I was like, well, if we go, we're going to go more than a week. Let's do this for like two and a half weeks, just father-son trip. Nuts. That's a nuts So trip. we went half and half. We went down to Puerto Rico for two and a half, half weeks, got a high rise on the ocean, and it was incredible. It was incredible. I remember first day down there since he actually went to Hocking Hills, which is in Ohio, the week prior. And my dad just somehow always, you know, getting hurt and wanting to still maintain activity. He went hiking in Hocking Hills and messed up or tweaked his leg. And I remember the first day down there, we get down there. And I, I, I'm the type of guy I like to adventure a you little bit. want to do something. I, I, I want to do something. You're not sitting on the beach. No, I want to do something. So... We went actually into the rainforest and uh, the El Yunque rainforest in, in Puerto Rico. And um, I read the small little forum of this waterfall called Charco Preto. 
And it wasn't like a big tourist site that where everybody could go or you don't need tickets to get into the actual rainforest. It was pretty much this beaten path up into the rainforest. Felt like you were riding around in a go-kart. My dad was like, where are you taking me? I didn't I didn't tell him where I was taking him first day down there. He's like, where are you taking me? I feel uncomfortable. I feel like we're going to drive off the side of this, this cliff and something's going to happen. We make it all the way up there. We, we pull up across this little bridge and I still have no idea where I'm going. I read this little forum. I'm like, go up, walk up this creek about 100 yards to see a rope, climb up this rope, follow the path of this creek. About a, a mile back, you'll run into three little waterfalls, and then you'll come across a giant waterfall, arguably the largest waterfall in all of, all of Puerto Rico. <laughs> We're walking up this creek, and my dad's like, son, like, where are you taking me? Like, he's, <laughs> he has a bad knee. I'm like, dad, you can make it. I'm encouraging him. Finally, about halfway back, we see a small little waterfall. He was like, this is cool. And I was like, I got I got to tell him. I got to tell him now because yeah. if he thinks this is cool, we got to make it back there right. together. So I told him and he was like, oh, OK, well, why didn't you say so? I would have been all in for it. And I was like, well, I wanted to surprise you because he he loves seeing stuff like that, too. And, and I wanted to be a surprise. Way. We made it all the way. And we got a bunch of pictures at the end. It was something out of like a King Kong movie. You look straight up. And it was just the biggest waterfall I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, but that's tight. super cool trip. So the water was perfect. Super cool trip. It, the water was absolutely really cold. Um, I think I read something where it's just billions of gallons of water every single year um, in Puerto Rico that rains over the El, El Unque rainforest. If, it's really cool because when you look over the horizon and the clouds coming in, one thing about Puerto Rico is when it rains, it doesn't rain too too much. And all these clouds start gravitating towards the top of the rainforest. It rains there almost 24 hours a day. At the very top. Did it rain on you guys while you guys were going on the top? Yep. Okay. Yep. So it made it a little bit more miserable. It was fun, though. Yeah. It was fun. And it, one cool thing about Puerto Rico is there's no poisonous snakes or anything, anything like that. that. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be afraid of. No top predators there. No top pres- predators to hurt you. Yeah. I thought that the other day when I was uh, I was in Georgia chopping trees down from my dad at his new property. And uh, I heard this howling and stuff behind me. I'm like... <laughs> God damn it. Like, is that a wolf? Like, I heard a bunch of howling. I'm like, God, that's a lot of wolves. I'm bent over using a chainsaw. Like, I'm like perfectly set up to just get massacred by a wolf. And I have to stop. And I'm like, I'm just feeling weird. I was like, there's there's definitely something watching me. I see some movement in the trees and stuff. I'm like, nah, I get back on my four wheeler <laughs> and I go to go to the thing and I look up, are there wolves in Georgia? There's no wolves in Georgia. It's coyote, a bunch of coyotes. And so I was like, oh, I will, I will massacre 40 coyotes. Like it, I'm not, I have a chainsaw. I'm fine. And I went back out there, then, but I was scared. I, like, stopped working because I thought it was going to be a bunch of wolves. They say there's actually black panthers out there, too, but there's not recorded any black panthers, but just, like, the people in the, in the hills say there's black panthers. So really all you got to worry about is bears. Side note, I didn't know there were bobcats in, Indi- in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. I just found that out yesterday, actually. Yep. Yeah, there's bobcats here, for sure. We've only seen them in zoos, but, you know, they're out there. Crazy. Crazy. What's your next big trip? Um, That's yeah. to be determined. Yeah? I'm kind of like you. I'm pretty spontaneous with my trips. You are. And it's kind of like a, a last-second thing most more often than not, and we end up going somewhere. But that's, you know, that that's one beautiful thing that, that you know, attributes to – the work that I do now, you know, that was completely new to me in the beginning, but, you know, now it's become, you know, my norm and, and what I do every single day, day in and day out, you know, I'm able to do these types of things. And it's absolutely amazing to be able to do these types of things and to be able to come back and to still be here like I never left. Yeah. It, it, it's absolutely just, there's there's nothing like it. Yeah, pick up where you left off. No, I've been having a lot of I don't know when my next big trip is going to be. The last trip that I took to Georgia with Jimmy and Zach, um, we drove cheap cars all the way down there for my <laughs> birthday and stuff. That was fun. And I'm always worried when I go out of town, like I'm going to come back and it's going to be a mess. And when he's talking cheap, he's talking cheap cars. $1, no, $1. no air conditioning in one. I think and didn't all I, of them, there's no air conditioning. Did I hear correctly a tire fell off of one of them? Yeah, so the, the tire fell the completely fuck off a car. I don't even know how you guys made it down there. We made it. I w- we would have made two cars down there if I didn't run over something and pop a tire, but, you know, we still made it down there with one, gave it away. 
we'll make an episode out of that. We filmed it all, so we'll we'll put that out there eventually. Um, but that was kind of like my last really big trip that I have for a while. I'm gonna go pheasant hunting, I think, in October. You're a hunting guy, aren't you? I'm I'm a bird hunter. You know, I killed a wildebeest one time, but that what's, was more. What's is that the biggest thing you've ever hunted? Yeah, a wildebeest. What's bigger than a wildebeest? I don't know. Dinosaur? I don't know. There's nothing bigger than <laughs> elephant. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right, but I just I don't know. I thought wildebeest seemed like close enough. <laughs> if you to find a, cow. a dinosaur, let me know. <laughs> it seems like it'd be close enough to a cow that would be like good to eat. So, actually, um, I think I think we ate wildebeest. We did. I brought it in and uh, we made a burgers. bunch of burgers. So. But that was like the only hunting hunting I've ever done. Like most time it's just bird hunting. Because I can only really use a shotgun. I'm not really good at that. You've never been hunting before. I've never been hunting before. And you really don't have any inclination to do any kind of hunting. I think it'd be cool. I think I've shot a shotgun before, but it was more so clay tiles that were, you know, shooting up in the air and it was for fun with my buddy a little while back, just out on one of his properties and never been hunting though. I think it'd be fun to take a bunch of people and do like defensive shooting courses. That would be fun. So I think like get like five to seven people and like hire like an ex Navy SEAL or something like that, a Marine, to train us on on how to shoot, you know, effectively and stuff like that. I think that would be cool. That would be cool. I'm doing it for the girls. Their Christmas presents. Um, this year I've already told them, so it's not a surprise. But I'm taking all the girls. I found an ex FBI agent um woman that is going to take the all the girls in the office out okay um they're going to get trained on using guns defensively and things like that like how to get out of their purse or how to get in the car and like get out of a bad situation like get on target really fast and you know close groupings and all that other good stuff and then at christmas i'm gonna buy them all guns and i'm gonna, like <laughs> either hydro dip them or get them engraved with perfect steel solutions and stuff like that That's and they're all gonna neat. get guns that's pretty neat. So if you want to rob Perfect Steel, not a, a good time to do it is now. You don't want to do it towards Christmas time because they're all going to be armed and dangerous. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's awesome. That is awesome. That's going to be sick. They're all going to be Just armed. Just don't make the, the ladies mad in the front office after Christmas. No, that's not a good idea. But I've been wanting to do something like that for a while. And it's so hard to get stuff for the girls in the office because, I mean, they're just not, they're not sometimes as passionate about stuff as we are. And I was just trying to find something like that no one has done before. I'm like, who gives weapons I think that, out I, at I work? I think that is something that no one's ever done before. No one's, no one's ever armed the front office before. No, absolutely not. I'm doing it. Unless you're security or something like that, never. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's pretty tight. We went and shot... Um, How did you... F, an ex-FBI agent. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. The white privilege, I just have a lot of people, you know, um, that I get to know. And I'm like, oh, what can we do here? And like, we'll do this. We'll give everybody guns and <laughs> teach them how to load them, teach them how to do safeties, teach them how to do, you know, roll out and out of a car and fire away. I'm on hit squad. Ugh. You have any questions for me, big dog? I feel like I do most of this talking. I mean, you did share some stories, but I feel like every time I do one of these, like, um, I don't get a lot of questions. And I'm trying to, like, switch that up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What was the biggest hurdle for you in the beginning in this industry? Because, you know, on previous podcasts, you and Ryan talked. And, you know, you and Ryan came from, you know, another another company. And um, you guys kind of, you know, took your leap of faith, yeah. per se, and uh, started this. Yeah. And it's turned out to be an absolute wonderful thing for everybody, right. everybody involved. And what was the biggest hurdle for you in the beginning of doing something like this when you started, when you got started, you know, when it was established, we had, you know, what we had and what was the biggest thing for you to get, be able to start getting projects and start, start reaching customers? And that wasn't the problem. That wasn't a problem. Uh, I think most of it was like two part, right? So like, I started with $25,000 and I gave my dad the title of my truck and he gave me 25 G's. So the finite amount of money to make it work in the couple weeks, you only had a couple how of weeks. How does that even, how do you make, make it, it work with $25,000? Just kind of ignorance, I guess. I don't know. Just being like, yeah, it's got to work or we're just done. 
you know as an investment i mean you've lost probably money on either cars or houses or rent or whatever to the tune of more than twenty five thousand dollars. so i thought it's not really that much money it's a lot of money at the time because it was all of everything we had but like if we lost it i mean whatever we just go get normal jobs again you know but the biggest thing was when we started we actually didn't have any financing so i was selling jobs with financing with no one to finance them and i just we didn't tell anybody because through miscommunications or belief a lot of things that happens it's real it was a real grimy place the last person and those people the the dirty finance people sucked up to that place because they were given lots of businesses uh, lots of lots of money to go finance these projects and stuff and ryan thought that he could get all those finance companies to come just instantly finance him because he thought he was a big deal there well in the moment he cut ties with that business no one cared about him at all and they definitely didn't care about me i had done zero business technically with the finance companies and so day one we're like no the finance company just ghosted us like the dude was supposed to be like our buddy and he met us for breakfast a bunch of times and sent us all this paperwork and then at the end he's just like nah but bro you and, you grind and and so we just sold a bunch of deals anyway with like yeah it's gonna be like 300 dollars a month payment or 200 dollars a month payment i was like i'll figure it out and i we through Ryan's other contact, we had another guy here in town that knew of a lady in Ohio that we still use this day named Mary, and she runs all of our stuff. She's got a network of about five or six dealers that we work with, and uh, she shops around and gives us the best price and stuff. She signed us up. Then after that second week, we were up and going. We sent her like 10 deals. <laughs> we're like, wow. we wow. had like, <laughs> had already sold like so much. We were trying to sell cash because we could do cash. I had bank accounts and I had the LLC and everything set up. Like we could sell cash and be fine. And I had um, the metal roofing company that we bought our stuff from, um, the metal roofing supply company. They were gonna give me two jobs on credit. And then when I got those two jobs done and paid for, then I could order another two and you know, until I caught up, right? And so that was all taken care of. But we didn't have any finance when we started. So it was like, man, second week, at third week, if we didn't get any deals financed, we're done because we can't install anything. So that was a that was a nightmare. So starting off a roofing company and not doing that kind of stuff, that was that was pretty harrowing. Not have any finance because like a lot of people have to finance. I know that back then, if someone called me like, "Hey, it's twenty thousand dollar roof," I'm like, I don't I don't have it in the safe. You know, I don't have it. Um, so a lot of people got to finance whether it's a hundred or three hundred dollars a month. They have to finance that. So that was big. And then me not knowing how to run a business, right? I don't know how many businesses you've ran in the past. I Absol had never done one. Absolutely zero. zero. You know, I've worked for a lot of things, and I've done a lot of things. I've been a tapenaki chef. I've been a welder and a hydraulics guy and parts and accounting and in sales and operations and a waiter and a bartender and, you know, all these. I've worked a go-kart truck. I've done all these crazy things. But none of those things are running a company. No one goes, well, how do you make how do you do profit i mean just you sell and then it's more money than what you and spend. that was going to be my next question for you so like i didn't know i relied on the information that i had gotten you know uh originally and uh and it was bad info but i just ran with it um because like say like you sell a twenty thousand dollar just for example if you sell a twenty thousand dollar roof back then you know we were only calculating you know, how much we had to pay a sales rep, how much the materials cost, how much to install it. That's it. Nothing else. So, like, if it was 15000 for those three things or four things, then it looked like we made five grand. I'm like, oh, my God, we are killing it. <laughs> Guess what? Those aren't the only expenses. There's a little thing called overhead. My salary, Ryan's salary, um, computers, internet, phones, rent, uh, cars, gas, uh, gas for all you guys, all us. We none of it was taken into account. So really, we were kind of like losing money per se on most jobs for a long time because I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. I I just someone told me I had bad information, you know, and I just like ran with it 
And then eventually I got smart enough. We were very to the, to the T now, and, you know, five, six years later, but I didn't know how to count. It sounds easy. Like if you're selling ice cream, well, I can make the ice cream for a dollar and I sell it for $3. I'm making $2. It's not altogether. You have taxes you have to pay. You have, you know, overhead and you have, you know, your electricity, you have whatever there else to goes into that. It's not just pure cut and dry what you make it for and what you sell it for. Um, so it took me a minute. I mean, I mean, years to get really good. I mean, got better progressively throughout the time, but without doing more exponentially every single month or every single year, we'd have been dead in the water. We just very fortunate that we had such a team and we kept on getting bigger so fast that, you know, it just worked out. Like when I didn't have money for taxes at the end of the first year or something like that, you know, I didn't have any, we'd sold so much, but then like a $90,000 tax bill or something like that. See, that we was going to be my next question. We didn't though. save up any money for taxes. Because you, how do I know? You grinded so hard and, and you had so many walls and barriers to overcome Yeah, and things that Sometimes you didn't even foresee lucky. happening and you they happened lucky. and you had to keep going. Yeah. And you know, me mentally, you know, you had to just keep going. Where were you at mentally? How did you keep going and, and keep pursuing through all of that? Because I mean, looking back, it's 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 crazy to you know you probably look back and you're like, wow, you know, it's nuts. We should have been taken out by so many different things. But like going back to that, that I, we just happened to get a rebate from the uh, metal company for a hundred thousand dollars. So like we paid our tax bill. Next year, we knew to save money for taxes, but without that, I'd have owed. I would have taken out a loan. We could have probably got past it, but like you know, we didn't save up any money. Um, the thing that worked well for us to solidify that we weren't going to go anywhere was in the beginning. I was there doing whatever for 16, 20 hours a day. Like that was the norm for me, and you not were like. Not to say that and people are like, oh, he worked a lot. No, I worked almost all the hours. I worked almost all the hours that I could possibly work. It wasn't like I had food, went out for dinners, I did nothing. I only did that for most of the hours of every single day. When everybody else was doing their thing, they go work their shifts and go home. I was there and I was there because I didn't know how to do this stuff. So I was teaching myself as I was going along how to do payroll. Like, I don't care if I gave you, you know, $100,000 next week to figure out payroll. You couldn't do it in one week. You're going to mess it up. And so, like, trying to train myself, watch YouTube videos and then go through and, like, figure out tax stuff to go pay for people stuff, how to print checks, how to get, how do you get checks? How do you get checks with the names and stuff on them for work and to come out of a business account and how to print? We printed all the checks in the back of the day before we had ADP and all that other stuff. We had to do all those. And that was really fun, but also incredibly challenging because I had no training in any of that. Um, buying a printer and how to set it up to print checks and do it. It sounds like a simple thing, but like it's not, you know, it's easy now because I can tell someone how to do it. But right, like right. when you don't know anything, you're like, you just buy like, Go to Home Depot and buy a print. Well, not every printer can do that. Um, those those kind of things. And then uh, paying people 1099 versus W-2. Like, that was a huge challenge that we had. Um, we just didn't. So I only overcome that by working all the hours. I've always maintained that I'm not. I'm a very dumb person. I think people can probably tell this. Uh, you know, we're like 20 podcasts in by now. But, like, I'm pretty <laughs> dumb. But what I will overcome with my ignorance is just absolute work like i will grind through it exactly yeah i think one of the cool things is you you had that mentality where you know you're working all those hours and you were you were there but you had that mentality like i i can't let this fail like i'm not gonna fail at this i can't let this fail because i'm fully committed to it yeah and you know when you first asked me you know what brought you to where you're at to help you be as success like as successful as you are in what you do you know, it's it's not same apples to apples, but it's almost kind of the same in the regard where you you have. To, I had the mentality of I I have to have the mentality that I can't fail at this. Yeah. I got to keep going. I got to keep going, 
because, you know, there have been barriers. You know, there's barriers every single day you run into out there when you're in the field. Yeah. Every single day. Well, you're sick a lot. I mean, you, you've you been sick quite a oh, few times. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's been absolutely awful how many times I've gotten sick. Yeah, and you gotta, you got to get up, and when you're still not totally recovering, get out there and I mean, you know, it, kill it. You know, I, I, I don't want to fail so bad that I, I, I want to, I want to go out there and work that I've had, you know, Jimmy, who, you know, who, who helps me out, who has told me, Hey, stay home. I want you to get better. Stay home. Don't go out there and work. And I'm like, buddy, I want to go out there and work. He's like, no, stay home. Yeah. And I've never had anybody tell me that before. Yeah. And it was like, this is completely different Yeah. because I want to go work and I'm, t I'm being told not to work, but mm -hmm. I want to go work. Yeah. Probably the best thing I didn't because, you know, now, you know, getting the health back and everything like that. Yeah, you've been healthy for a minute now. Yeah, it feels great. But, <laughs> yeah, feels feels really great. But, you know, being able to being able to stick with it, you know, because when you have things like that, hurdles in your life, or you, whether you're sick or, you know, what, whether your car breaks down or whether, you know, a family issue comes up or something in your life to where just a massive barricade, where it can just, like, it's like from me to here, if I want to get to you and I have a narrow path that I have that I see that I want to get to and I have a goal in mind and you have something along the way along that path that takes you off that path. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to have you, I mean, you have to find a way to get back on that path. You have well, to. I, you just you just remind me of a, of a thing that happened in the beginning. Um, so I had that truck still. Right. The, I he let me use the truck, but he held the title in case I didn't pay him back within the allotted time that he would take the truck. So we only had that truck. Ryan didn't have a vehicle, you know. The other guy didn't have a vehicle. I only had a truck. And we had to go out and do, you know, the, one of the most important parts of this job is you must have a phone and you must have a vehicle. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You cannot do this job without a vehicle. But I had to give my truck to Ryan so he could go out there and go get the business. <laughs> so I had no vehicle. Zero. Wow. And so I'd Uber to work. So because I would wake up so early and go, and, and go to work and be there so late, you know, I had a fiancé or wife at the time, and she had to either take me to work and drop me off, pick me up, or Uber. And, like, I think a lot of people, they get stuck with going, I can't do a certain thing because of the situation that has arised. Exactly. And they take themselves out of that. That was never a thing. Well, I guess I can't work because I can't get to work. No, I mean, there is a way to do something. Did I spend way too much money? I'm talking hundreds of dollars per week on Uber, but I got to work every day. Like exactly. you can, you can do it. Don't let the lit in the in the in the in the process. This would have been a, such a little thing. Now we have 27 vehicles. I, if I run out of vehicles now, I'm gonna kill myself. But everybody in life should know by now that. What, whatever you put your mind to, whatever you want to accomplish, there's going to be things along the way that you have to hurdle. You yeah. have to you have to keep going that are going to come and try to take you off that that path that you're going down or it's just going to be a, a very big challenge. Some challenges bigger than others. Yeah. You're going to have little challenges. You're going to have huge challenges. And it's just like that path that I was talking about where you're going down that path and you see your goal. It's somewhere where you want to go. And obviously that path, you know, increases throughout time. If you hit a goal, you know, you set new goals for yourself. Or at least I, I hope you are, you know, for, for anybody out there. You know, it's good to set goals for yourself. It's good to keep challenging yourself. Never settle. To, yeah, exactly. Never settle. Never, never get content where you're at. Keep going, keep going forward. If you hit a, if you hit a mark that you hit... Keep going and, and set a new mark for yourself. Whether you get short or not, it's good that you you set that goal and you try to go. I mean, it's it's important every single day that you wake up and you you have a reason why, a reason why, why you're going forward and what you want to go forward and why you want to accomplish that and, and try to helps. accomplish that. It, it definitely de helps. It definitely, it definitely helps. helps when you have the why. You know, um, but a lot of people, like when I go back to like a normal basis thing, if you're a welder, you know, and your car breaks down you're like well i guess i'm dumb working now because i can't get to work I'm like no dude that needs to be you have to work you make it happen or get a bike rent a moped do something like most people think well i'm not i'll lose money then going and do better than doing absolutely nothing 
you know, like, and we're not talking. We're out. not talking about things that happen where, like, let's say you you have to get your leg amputated or things no, like that. No, we're talking that, about things that come up often, right? That you can You've overcome. You've seen it come come up a bunch where people have a tough time. You know, Derek Banks, who works here, hasn't had a car in seven years, and he's overcome it. He's overcome it. He's overcome seven it. years. He works here every single day, and I've watched a lot of people fail because the car, the, the tire came off of a car or something right. like that, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I, I'm just." I don't have money to fix it or blah, blah, blah. And it's or it's incredible because with what we do and what Derek Banks and I do, yeah, you know, you it, you have to have usually a car to be able to do this. You must have a car. Almost almost always you must have a car to do this. But but DB, we call him DB, yeah. he, do, he doesn't have a car and he still does this. He still does this every day and for six still, years. And he still makes money. <laughs> six six plus years. It's 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 incredible. No car. But that's that's the thing though. When you have challenges along your path that that come, you know, if you are determined enough, if you keep going and you want to keep going, you can get through it. It's whether or not you're going to make that decision if you want to get through it or not. I had a guy that uh, worked for us years ago, and uh, for whatever reason, either lost his license or just didn't have a car or no transportation, whatever. He just walked around his hometown. He lived in Bluffton. He would just walk around Bluffton. You could still. Do, I mean, you, you should have a car to do this, but don't let it stop you from doing it at the end of the day. I've seen a lot of people quit when something, even salespeople, they're like, hey, my van's on its last leg. I can't go run these appointments. Can you give me something closer to home? I'm like, no. Like, it's part of your responsibility. But find a way. I'd pay someone, you know, fucking 50 bucks to go drive me to an appointment or something like that if I didn't have money to fix my car or whatever like that. I don't care, you know? Better than not doing anything, roll it all in the dice. You know, like scared money doesn't make money. You no, ever heard that? It's, it's like the old saying, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, scared money don't make no money, right? I'm right. not saying be careless with your money, but like roll the dice a couple times. Right. Roll, roll the dice, you know. There's there's stuff to be won and gotten going places where people usually stop. If and you're, for, if and, you're seeing where people stop and you go past that, you're probably going to have a pretty good time. Right. And if you if you're one of those guys or girls out there who who are watching and you're like, you know, maybe I do want to change in my life or maybe, you know, there's something out there, maybe this is something that I kind of want to try out. And you're not scared of, you know, embracing new challenges and keep going and pushing forward. You know, if if they, if you can if you can hurdle some of these things and you go on with that, you know, that mind mindset of I want to do this, you know, like what I was talking about, fully committing to it and really, really going after it. There can be a lot of success in it, mm, a sure. lot of life changing success. And I had Zach on the original one that we did the podcast and stuff, and he's arguably one of the most successful people, too, as with you, um, as with Jimmy, as with those people that if you believe in what your company is doing you gotta believe. or if you're co like the essential company man i know that people put a negative connotation to that sometimes you're like oh you're you're dick riding pretty hard for uh these people or whatever but truly those happen to be the most successful people people think that to become the most successful people by jumping on that train and being like cult like appreciation for whatever that company is or doing but it happens opposite if you can get it before that you get the success, the success will come because you're going to rise to the top. You can't be a company man and be the worst person here. Who would want to do that? If I made $300 a week, I would not believe in this at all, and I wouldn't care. Okay? Right. The, the fact is is that you believe in something, and then after a while, you just you come to the top because that's all you know. That's all you care about. And all I can draw a thing, every single person that's 100% in – those are the people that are at the top in every single field here. The best roofer, the best window guy, the best op, you know, best managers, the best salespeople, the best canvassers, the best office people. They all bleed this in the off hours, the on hours. They believe it all the time, and they go above and beyond all of the time. And they didn't get that by being that. Like they didn't be. They weren't giving any. We didn't give anything to those people. They got better because they believed in it. Does that make sense? No, that makes that? that makes complete sense. I wish sense. I could make it more eloquent, but like, that's the that's a that's a big huge advantage. And I'm not trying to think, you know, if if you're a if you're a brick mason or something, if you're a 
if you're a uh, a lawyer or for a nonprofit, if you're um, if you're a doctor or whatever, if you're a hundred percent giving everything that you can give, and you got a little bit of talent, and you ride that company hard and you support that company and you go above and beyond the chances that something better is going to happen to you is just so much greater right everything becomes easier it does if you fight the waves like i've had a lot of jobs before where i'm just like i kind of hate these people that i work with or work for i'm not there anymore and either they fired me i fired myself whatever like it's hard to rise up in those things, even if you do have talent in whatever those you things are. You have to believe in the vehicle that you're in that's being driven yeah. and where you want to go. You have to believe in that. Yeah, that's Because if, 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 you're, if you go into, if you're riding a vehicle and you want to get somewhere in your life and you're using that vehicle or that train to get there and you're putting your efforts into that vehicle or train to get there and you don't believe in it and, and you want it to take you where you want to go, it's probably not going to work. Yeah, you need to jump ship. You need to jump. if you can't get yourself to be on it. Like we've seen some people struggle here recently, you know, where that that spark is gone, and we already know it's only a matter of time before they burn themselves out. You know, um, if you lose that, it's so hard to come back from that. Everyone has bad weeks, um, but if you lose that, it's really hard to get it back. You know, it's really because you're going to have you still got to believe it. Even when life doesn't work out, you still have to believe in that one thing. You have to. Whether it's religion or, or work or family or whatever. You have your to. marriage, whatever. Um, as soon as you're out of it, it's almost impossible to get back it, in. It really it's is. It's almost impossible because then bad stuff's going to happen to you. You're like, oh, this is why I don't believe in it. You convince yourself that it's not worth it. And then marriage, job you know, your relationship with God or, or whatever, they, they all tend to fail at that point. You know, back to that path, you know, that is probably one of the biggest things. If you stop believing on the path that you're walking down, I mean, that is the biggest detrimental thing in your pathway. The biggest thing. You know, in front of all the life instances that you could put forth mm -hmm. or, or, you know, come unexpectedly in your path, unless, you know, life and death and things like that, you know, you know, leg amputated, something that, you know, can't really, you know, for example, we, we had a, an amazing guy who got in a motorcycle wreck. Yeah. You know, that's something that, you know, we're not talking. Ben will be on a future podcast. I'm just worried about his mental portraying in, into a public eye. He's not the same exact person. Great guy, though. Awesome dude. Great guy. But since the motorcycle accident, that's why I'm looking for more reps because – you know, the loss of him, I had to uh, have to do fill Well, we're not stuff. talking about something like that happening on a path that, yeah. you know, and Ben's overcome that. You know, he, ben has he, overcome you know it's he's amazing. Still, he's, he's still coming into work. He, he's still we here. find stuff for him to do. Yeah, he's still, he's still here. But when you're along that path and, you know, different life instances, and you stop believing in that path, there's, also, there's almost 99% oh, of the time nothing you can do to get you to that that end goal that you want to achieve on that path, if you stop believing in that path you're you're going down, yeah, that's that's hard. Yeah, that's really hard. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff happen all at once many years ago um, with divorce. I was in the process of buying this facility and equipping it to make our stuff, and I lost a business partner all in the same three months, and. That normally would take someone out, I think, probably all those things together becomes tremendously hard to keep the faith in those things. Right. Um, but, again, at least I had something that I believed in. If I didn't have anything to believe in, that would have been, that would have been the end. But, you know, going through a divorce, I lose my house, you know, all this other stuff. I had to find a place to live. Well, luckily, I just bought a million-dollar facility. It didn't look like this. It looked like a big pile of crap. But I just got a trailer and moved in here and just kept on working. And then a business partner that wanted out, and I had to make that happen, you know. And I'm like, oh, God. And then doing something, again, that I have never done. But also, because I did all the other stuff before, I thought, well, why couldn't I do this too? When you when you begin to do that kind of stuff, like I don't know if you have any like weird hobbies or anything like that, um, but like 
if you want to get into woodworking and you don't know anything about woodworking, just start buying a woodworking set and then go from there. Then you get lazy and you go do all that kind of stuff. I thought so I already did the payroll and figure out the marketing and figure out how to pay taxes and figure out all that kind of stuff. Why couldn't I learn how to work a, a bender um, and put in computer programs to bend custom pieces of metal? Why can't I operate a slitter to um, a 30 seconds of a degree when it's slitting, when it's slitting metal? Why couldn't I program multi term mold formers to make sidewalls, end walls, you know, valley pans, ridge caps, things like that? Why couldn't I figure out a setup to, to stack all the metals and, and, and figure out a way to deliver all that stuff and how to operate a crane on the back of a 38 foot gooseneck trailer and tow it by a 550. Why can't I figure out how to way to, to get a CDL driver to go train them how to do all that stuff. And it just, you know, you just figure it out. Yeah. You know, so many people go, well, I, I can't do that because I don't know how to do that. Well, trial by fire motherfuckers let's go yeah like that's the greatest thing i can tell actually people. do have a, a weird, yeah you do have one of those i have a weird little yes. hobby and people look at me like i'm crazy when they talk to me about yeah. it i've actually had some people write is it collecting um it? kind of sort of no? not of i mean i do like collecting i i am into sports cards collecting you know one guy like i was telling you i'm, I'm big into anthony richardson right now i do not endorse going out and buying his memorabilia i just like anthony richardson yeah you know i'm a big colts guy you know I, i'm a colts fan and uh, he's our rookie quarterback this upcoming season. But one of the things that I kind of had to teach myself, and people look at me like, dude, what are you talking about? What are you crazy? And I get that look all the time, is uh, using blockchain. I use. Are you doing that? I use blockchain. So I know how I, I kind of had to teach myself. Yeah, you do have to teach yourself. I'm serious. Like, I didn't know how to do it. I, I, people were telling me, you know, I, I started getting on online, you know, forums and people who were deep within the space, and they were telling me these things. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And at first, I was like, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not even really looking to get into that or anything like that. But then, you know, I started as, as soon as I started getting deeper in the f space, I started teaching myself terminologies and how to how to do some of th these things. Like I know how to go from blockchain to blockchain. I know how how to use pretty much any DAP from any blockchain. I know how to get there. I know how to I know how to do all that. But it took me about three four years to learn how to do that. And looking back, like it's kind of crazy, like. Like where I was in the beginning of, of blockchain and what I could do with blockchain to where I'm at and now. And what are you doing with it? Well, see, I, I personally do like to use some of my money to invest into certain things, but I like to leverage my assets in different types of blockchains. So, you know, I like to look more so towards startup companies and things like that. So, you know, I'm going to get into some terms. People are going to be like, what are you talking about? Right. But, you know, market caps and studying the market caps. One thing I do is study the market caps of different things and run through numbers. And uh, I was never a math guy. For anybody who, uh, if you do tune into this and you went to school with me, you should know if you were in math class with me, I was never a math guy. It sucked at math. Um, never a big school guy either. I, school was just never a huge thing for me. Me either. Um, but, you know, I one thing that I had become witty with is math with market caps and studying market caps and the trajectory growth of, of companies and things like that and studying certain entities. And that's what I do in my free time is, uh, is do that. And not many people know that. And um, so one thing I'd like to do is leverage certain companies and, and entities um, alongside assets and, um, you know, the power of staking or yield farming and things like that. And people are like, what is that? I'm not going to get too, too deep into no, that. No, I wouldn't know what to even ask you about because I don't but, know anything. Um, but yeah, it was it, it, one of the things, you know, um, back then I, I'm, I'm invested into a company, you know, in, in India and I'm probably maybe the only American investor still. And they're like, who is this guy? You know, I pretty much come out of nowhere. I, all I did was, you know, I remember three and a half years ago, I was going on like, you know, platforms and forums and, you know, just like the stock market you have, you know, you can see top to bottom of the stock market, look up different stocks. Well, mm -hmm. like with uh, blockchains and cryptocurrencies, there's the same thing with like entities like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. And uh, I started going through these things and I started just like, I was like, you know what? Like these are already established projects like Bitcoin. Everybody knows pretty much what Bitcoin is, Ethereum and things like that. And everybody's like, buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum. I was like, that's cool, but what else? Like, I want, I want to kind of like just dive deep into something I know nothing about. Yeah. So I started just looking at recent blockchains that just like became blockchains. And I just started going down that hole. And next thing I know, like, I just, I, I'm, I was in it. I was in the hole and I was starting to use, use some of the things that were in that hole. 
And it's it's funny because, you know, people are like, you know, bring up like Dogecoin to, coin to me and I love, you know, hearing stuff like, you know, people bring that up to me and then like, they're like, yeah, like, do you do anything? And I start talking and look at me like, dude, okay, like shut up now. Like, right. we don't know what you're talking about. Like you sound crazy and I probably do sound crazy, but yeah, it's one of my weird little things I like to do. Yeah. So it may not make you a millionaire, but it's something that you like to play around with. You like to see the wins and losses of that kind of stuff. It was, it was insane. So quick little story. So when I was a caseworker, I had a, um, I had a guy who, uh, just an amazing guy, consider him, you know, a brother to me. And, you know, I go over to his family's house and it was almost like became a second family of mine. It was one of our routine things because we didn't have a whole lot of things to do together. But one thing we did have to have together was go to his family's house. And his mom almost became like a second mom to me. And same with his dad. And um, They started talking about like investing to me. And this is not investment advice for anybody out there. Little disclaimer on my end. But it was kind of cool because they came to me and they started talking to me about investing. And one of the things that his mom brought up to me was like, Zach, what do you know about Bitcoin? Because you're young, you know, Bitcoin. I keep seeing this word Bitcoin around. I'm like, hey, if you're, if you're curious about Bitcoin, check this out. And I remember her putting $1,000 into this. And within... A summer and a half, she paid her house off. No shit. No shit. And it was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing. One thing, my parents got divorced when I was coming at, you know, uh, out of middle school and into high school, and money was a big thing. Um, my mom lost the house because, you know, there were certain things that she couldn't afford on the house, and it was kind of a, a huge divide. And one thing was really cool because my dad... I don't think, I don't know if my dad's ever invested a day into his life, but he started seeing something in me. It was almost like he believed in me and what I was doing in my free time. I don't share this too, too often with too many people. Um, but you know, my dad got into that same thing that, you know, I kind of shared with her and it was something no one's ever heard before. And it was like one of those, when I'm talking market caps, it was a small market cap. Now it's considered a large market cap, top, t top 10, top 10 in blockchain now. And um, I remember back then I got into, I, I personally got into this at like 0 0.003. Yeah. And then it went to like, I remember that summer, I went to like 67 cents and I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I remember getting phone calls of-, of Which is like 50X. Uh, it, was, it was more than 50X because it was less than, uh, it was like a quarter of a penny. Yeah. And- um, then it went to a dollar. Then it went two dollars. Then it went three dollars. Oh, then it went to four fifty. Then it went to five fifty. I think it went to six. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And uh, my dad—I've never seen my dad so happy in my life. Did he, are you missing something here? Did he give you money to invest? No, no. He he uh, he he said, "Hey, I want to put some into that." When it was super low, mm -hmm. and it was a little bit. I think it was around a penny or below a penny. But it was just, it was one of those things that was like, Did you do well? Or? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's still in it to this day. He's still in it to this day. And now there's like, like, it's crazy. Like this blockchain partner with like in, or Egypt and doing like imports with them and things like that. Crazy. And, and it was like this, this project at the time, I'll, I'll just say it, it was Matic, now called Polygon. And before Matic became Polygon, it was Matic. It was the Matic token. Now it's Polygon. And my dad started staking. I, I taught him how to leverage his assets to yield rewards and and to make profit onto whatever, whether the market were to go down or stay sideways for him to be able to earn additional interest on his assets. And uh, it was, it, it's amazing. So yeah. Yeah. So that's one little weird thing about me. And yeah. Have you done okay in that? I've done okay. Okay. Good. I've done I just, okay. I'm always scared about it. I went to a bunch of, uh, when you get into this kind of like realm of entrepreneurship or contractors or any of these high level things, I get invited to go to these groups and I was part of this circle group and uh, it was in Utah. I went out there um, and they bring in the best real estate people. They bring in the best uh, crypto people, blockchain people. They brought whoever the fuck's doing the monkey thing or whatever, like buying the monkeys or whatever. 
Do you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, okay. like Bored Apes. Bored Apes, that's what it is. I thought I was looking for the, <laughs> the thing. And like uh, NFTs. All, all NFTs for sure. Um, because they want you to diversify, which is like as a business person, like you're supposed to diversify. To me, I'm just diversifying in the own products that I sell and the services and things like that. I'm not interested in doing the online stuff. But I opened mine. You know, I'm a fat dude from the Midwest that owns a roofing, metal roofing company. Okay. Um, the real estate stuff made sense. I would like to do that at some point. Uh, to to Sitting on your money is obviously very bad. If you have $5,000 in your bank account, you should spend that to go do something investing. You shouldn't spend that on shoes or put down a payment on another car or something like that. But go buy a house and rent out. Go do something with them. Go buy something that somebody wants and sell it for 2x, whatever. Do something to make that money work for you because it doesn't make any money sitting in the bank account. We can both agree on that. I agree. And so, like, I listen to the real estate stuff, and I'm like, okay. And they're talking about you can join these real estate funds, and then they, they work essentially like mutual funds, um, but they just use your money to leverage more projects, and then you get paid a dividend on the, on the income. Uh, then I listen to the monkey thing, which – whatever and then i listened to um crypto and nfts and all that stuff and i had this there's this one guy who super multi-millionaire crypto dude he he was like the president or like ceo or like vice president of vivant which is like the one of the largest security, cam cameras security and, people and things like that ever and uh he quit that job to go do crypto he was making like five hundred thousand plus a year um, good money really good money and he quit quit didn't get fired he quit to do crypto and he explained all this stuff and blockchain and all that other stuff and uh and everyone is just i mean a lot of the people in there did not look like me these are beautiful women beautiful men um all workout people all dressed to the nines i'm in you know whatever i normally <laughs> wear you know, and people have scarves in there, like which is like you feel like people yeah. that want to pretend to be either rich or are rich, like come sometimes just wear scarves. I don't know what the thing is, but like <laughs> that's not my thing. They're doing oh, we had a meditation guy who was also like one of the top reps at Vivint, um, who like was in Mark Cuban's suite at the Sixers games or whatever, like all, all these things, met Drake before, all these things. And I'm just trying to be a good steward of and learn all this stuff. Well, this guy gets done talking about blockchain, crypto, NFT, and how it's going to change everything. And from golf memberships to, you know, buying, leveraging assets, things like that. At the end of it, everyone's just like nodding heads. Like, they're like, yeah. And like, he just saw me dead staring in his eyes. And he's like, uh, do you understand everything I talked about it? I go, buddy, I got no fucking clue what you're talking about <laughs> at all. Fuck all this shit. And, and the whole the whole room exploded because they knew. I they knew that I would know. You know, nothing. there's people in that crowd just shaking their they, head yes. And they, no, <laughs> they all understood it. They know that looking at me, they go, there's no way this fat idiot has <laughs> got a good hold on this stuff. <laughs> And I would just explode. I go, I'm going to stick to putting roofs on houses. And there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that, you know. And I want to make that perfectly clear. Like, you don't have to be into all this new, new, you mm -hmm. know. You don't have to be. If that's your thing, then be into that. But, like, I and I, I remember the whole classroom just erupted. <laughs> just absolutely exploded. And um, I also remember when we were doing the meditation thing. You know, everyone, they, they take all the chairs out of the room. They make everyone lie down on the floor. I mean, we're adults. This isn't preschool. They make us all lie down on the floor, and the dude is like, all right, take two minutes, breathe in, hold, breathe out, breathe in, hold. Now, imagine yourself, and you're in your bed. Then imagine you floating over your bed. And imagining yourself. Did you imagine that? The, I tried. I tried. I tried to be in it. At the end of it, I whip out my phone and I videotape everyone that's <laughs> doing it. I'm like, this is fucking, this is how cults start. And I'm like, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm still successful and you don't have to do the crazy shit you see people doing. Right, right. And that brings back to the point. I mean, just like. 
I do some weird things myself, weird avenues. You know, that's, I'm not encouraging everybody no. to go down that weird avenue path. That's just something I found, you know, passion in and thing I love to do. You know, in, in Austin, you know, you, you just took head on, you know, a lot of different new challenges and what you and you figured it out. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what we're kind of both kidding at here is yeah. like, you know, whatever you're going towards, you know, like sometimes it doesn't matter if you really necessarily don't know how to do it. This, this talk going back to yeah, what yeah. I do, you know, this, this was something completely different, different for me, you know, background from background, you know, my first job, I worked at Aeropostale, you know, a summer you little did. job, you know, and then I went from high school to KFC actually, and uh, went to KFC and then you know, long story short, I became a, a kickboxing trainer for uh, a gym here in Fort Wayne. My buddy, you know, and I did that. And it was more so not like a kickboxing gym, but more so like a workout, 30-minute workout. And that was fun. Um, and then part-time, I was a valet driver at a nice restaurant here in town. And Oh, do you uh, remember that? Yeah, yeah. And then one day, you know, a guy came up and he was like, you know, I believe it or not, I know I'm a scrawny little dude now, but, you know, I used to work out quite a bit. And this one guy came up to me and was like, hey, you're Zach. And I'm like, I have no idea who you are. And he was like, I'm such and such. He was like, we should work out sometime. And he was driving a, a very nice, you know, BMW M Series racing car. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's let's work out sometime. Next thing I know, I'm a legal assistant. And I became a legal assistant for, you know, a little over a year. And then I, I stepped out of becoming an illegal assistant personal trainer to become, you know, a caseworker. Actually, how I became a caseworker, I met a homeless dude on the corner of uh, Walmart over here on this side of town, and um, come to find out, he was actually homeless, living in a tent, got approved by management in Wal in Walmart, in the woods behind Walmart, and uh, I knew I wanted to do something else, but I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't know where God was trying to lead me at that yeah. point in my life, and... Um, it was interesting. About within six months, you know, I, I ended up becoming, well, I went to a YMCA and there was this big guy, Dreads. He walks up to me and my buddy, we're playing basketball. That's another thing I like to do in my free time. And he was like, hey, do you mind if me, me and my kids play basketball? I'm like, dude, hop on in. Like, absolutely. He's like, I just want them to see competition. I'm like, dude, I, absolutely. We're just having fun anyways. Hop on in. And I remember looking at my guy, his name's Kenny who was homeless at the time. And um, we put him up in the hotel, me and a couple resources. And we, we got him in a month in a hotel. And eventually, you know, things started getting better in his life. And uh, I remember looking at him, I'm like, hey, because he, he was nagging me. He was like, hey, dude, please become my case where you're the only person I trust. You've been a friend to me. You've been there for me. If I call you, you know, you're there. And um, I became a friend to him. And I was like, you know what? Sure, I'll give it a shot. That same day, he took me to an office. And there was a guy there, same guy with the dreads, that came up to me at the basketball court and asked if he could play basketball well, with his cool. kids and I. Hired me on the spot. That's how I became a caseworker, started taking on other clients. That's me. And then transitioned to what I'm doing now. Well, that's cool. Um, so that's a little backdrop of kind of yeah. like just that's just cool how just those, my, those webs kind of string together. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really amazing to look back. And it's really cool in the relationships that, you know, I still have with people who, you know, I still have relationships with majority of all those guys that, you know, I wouldn't even say they were clients of mine. You know, I just served them as friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know in that industry, you're not supposed to technically look at them as friends. Baloney. Yeah. You know, they were my friends. I think we had, I had that on the previous podcast. Um, we talked about like kind of toxic people. A lot of those people are pretty toxic. You know, the people that you're trying to help, I mean, it just happens. I mean, you don't get in that situation without having toxic traits. I'm sure Kenny... Or not Kenny. Was that the Kenny was the guy? Who yeah, was, yeah. I'm sure Kenny had some toxic traits, you know. And they always tell you in all these motivational things, anywhere you see, they're like, get rid of the toxic people. If your wife or girlfriend or friends or family or coworkers or managers or whatever, if any of those people are toxic to you, then you brush them off to the wayside and then go on to do bigger and better things and believe in yourself and all this other stuff. Okay. That probably works, and that's probably good advice most of the time. But I have a different approach, and I think you've seen it before, is that there's another avenue to where it's better to bring those people up with you. It makes your life better. So there's toxic people, and there's a reason why they're toxic, 
And if you can change their minds and wins their hearts and minds to change for the better and bring them up with you, that is worth way more than doing it by yourself. I have never looked at anything as a project with Perfect Steel and done, this is here because I did this. Never. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about before and believing. And it's like when you, even if you, you know, somebody has a toxic trait, like, you know, Kenny, he was going through so much stuff, so much stuff. You know, it was almost like when he started believing in me, I started believing in him. Or yourself. In myself. Yeah, exactly. And then just like looking back, it's actually just, it's incredible when I look back and to see where he's at now. He has his own place and things like that. Of course, he still has his trials and tribulations. We all do. But like where he came from and where he's at now, just believing in each other and me believing that I could help help him out. It's been amazing. And you know, Back to where, you know, we were, we were, where we were going with, you know, my, when I was going with my past and everything into this, this was completely new to me, what I'm doing now. And I kind of just took it head on. I didn't know, like, same with my blockchain. Like, I didn't know where I was going to go with it. I didn't know where this was going to lead me. I didn't know what I was necessarily doing at the beginning. I didn't really actually get much training, by the way. I think I only had like one or two days. And then Jimmy said, look, look, hey, I'm going to just go out there. I was like, and do what? Drama partner, I'm like, baby. do what? He's like, just go out there. I'm like, that was the first time. I remember having butterflies that day. I was like, I have no idea. I remember I pitched Jimmy in his, in his, in his office, and he just slammed the door on me. And I'm like, I'm not built for this. I was like, I am absolutely not built for this. There's no way if this is going to happen to me, no way. I'm not getting the door slammed in my face. And you just made me look so stupid. <laughs> I was like, I, I feel really stupid. But I went out there after that, and it's, it's just, I didn't know anything, really, other than just a small little training I got, you know, now we go through, you know, pretty extensive training, and, you yeah. know, people are set up. I made it through three days of training, <laughs> three days, and they were like four hours of training a day, and at the end of the third day, he goes, we have extra leads tonight, you're, run you're running one, and I go... Dude, I don't even know. I haven't even seen the paperwork yet. He goes, don't worry <laughs> about paperwork. Just go sell it, and we'll. I'll, you can call me, and we'll figure it out. And I go, that's so dumb. Like, what are you <laughs> talking about? Like, that's most of the process. We're going to fill it out and, and do all that kind of stuff. He goes, just go see what happens. He's like, I don't care. And he just go sell it, though. And I'm like, all right. And I went out there. I remember doing, like, a four-hour thing. Like, I show up there at 6 o'clock. I don't leave there until, like, 9, 10 o'clock at night. They feed me dinner and all this other stuff. And I'm like... Hey, bud, I sold it. He goes, all right, well, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, figure out the paperwork on your own. If not, I'll just go back out there tomorrow and write it up. And I'm like, okay. And it was like $40,000 deal or something like that. I'm like, this is nuts. I mean, it was crazy. But, like, you just figure it out. Yeah, yeah. You just figure it out. Exactly. One exactly. of my biggest things when I was coming up, and I don't know if this happens to you, is, like, places. Do you ever go hit houses that have been hit before? absolutely okay. i had my biggest successes when other people would lay the groundwork and i would go out there and just slay it like if someone else got shut down you know they we'd give them a quote a year ago and just never followed up or whatever i would go back then and almost always sell those things because they were looking for that magic whatever that last salesperson didn't say to be like yeah i don't know why i'm not doing it you know like i wanted to do it i just the dude didn't present it or right or whatever and i'm i would go make so much money i would not be offended at all to give me rehash leads or anything like that things that another person because i had more to offer when that person did and i had most of my successes by doing that and it would also piss off the other people because then they would be like i sold that one that you didn't sell and they're like that dude wasn't buying i'm like he, he wanted it well a lot of people you know move forward with things when they believe or see things in you and believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I think Zach, you know, on a previous podcast covered that, you know, why do people, you know, you know, listen to you? Why, why do people, when you, when you pitch a, a metal roof, why do they necessarily buy a metal roof? Even though the product's phenomenal, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it stands apart. Why do they buy it from you? It's because they believe in me. Mm -hmm. They believe in me. Yeah, he's got it on his own house. Like, exactly. You know, the power, you know, we keep 
throw in the word belief and believing, you know, it's a, it's a powerful thing when you believe in yourself. And if you are one of those guys who believe in yourself and you, you know, you believe in yourself and you want to head on into something else and you believe that you can do new things and you want to try new things, this may be a great fit for you. How do you feel when people say that you have to do, you have to love what you do every day to be successful? How do you feel when people, you've heard that saying before, um, if you love what you do, you never work a you day. You almost in your hear life. that. You almost hear that everywhere. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, you, that's, you, you, that's thrown around a lot, even on just like talk shows and yeah. you see what, it on what, TV. What does that mean to you? What's your take on that? It true, not it, true. It doesn't mean that when you go through a day into what you do, that you're not loving every single second of doing it. There's times where I'm working out there and I absolutely hate my situation that I'm in or hate something that's happening in the current moment. Like Friday? Yeah, Friday. <laughs> like, oh. I brought it up for a reason. Oh, abs- for absolutely, a reason. absolutely. One of those days, Friday. Ten leads in it. Doesn't mean I don't love what I'm doing. Yeah, ten leads in it. How much you get? Zero. Zero. Ten. You ten. worked for free that day. For free. For free. For free. For free. And ten leads is a lot of leads. Ten leads is for, a bunch. For anybody to set, that is a lot of leads. Ten leads... Not one. Not one. <laughs> Zero. You worked all day for nothing. You know, we actually had a fantasy draft that night, and I'm one of those guys. I'm pretty arrogant, too. Um, I get a call from Jimmy, and he's like, hey, I need you to be there at the draft. And I was like, I'll, I'll let you know. And I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll let you know if I'll be there. And he's like, no, be there. If you can do anything for me, be there at the draft. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll be there. But let me go. Let me go back to this one previous that I just, you know, got a, a little bit ago and, and make sure I got the right phone number. And he was like, buddy, you're just come. And I was like, no, I got to take care of this first. And, uh, you know, I got the right phone number, but it didn't go through. And uh, but that was just one of those instances like there's nothing else that could be going any worse than today. To, that's than the today. worst day. That's, a, that's the a, worst day possibly. That's the worst possibly. day possible. possible. Besides like. It and here I am now. Here like I am that. now, smiling and laughing yeah, about I mean, it. You got to. But I mean, man, in that moment, I mean, just ask, just ask, uh, you know, my girlfriend. I was, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was pretty upset. But you know, though, it, it, when you're talking about loving what you do to be successful, yeah. it doesn't mean you can't. You know, talking about that path and having trials and tri- tribulations along the way, it doesn't mean you can't hate something in the current moment or something could go wrong and. Oh yeah, I love this. I absolutely, <laughs> you, I you I did love not this. Love Friday. No, absolutely you hated Friday. I did not love Friday, but in the long term scheme of things, you know, I still believe in the train that I'm on. I still believe in the path that I'm on, the set of wheels that I'm on. I believe in myself. I believe the company that I'm with, and I absolutely love everything that I'm a part of. Yeah. And when I see, you know, the the whole thing, you have to love what you do to be truly successful. I tend to agree with that because you do have to love it's it's almost like when we're talking about you know being a part of the train or the car and the set of wheels that you're on if you don't believe in that that yeah. that wheels to take you to where you want to go how are you going to get there how are you really going to get there yeah that's that's the same thing like i have to love the train and to love love being what i'm a part of to be able to really maximize the full potential that i want to reach that I'm a part of it. If, it. if it makes any consolation to you, my Friday wasn't that great either. We both had bad Fridays. Uh, one of my beloved coworkers drove a box truck through the garage door oh. over there. Oh my gosh. Straight through. Just straight through. Ripped it off the hinges. Something something with coworkers and uh, box trucks. They hate. They love running into stuff. I don't know what it is. But they love running into. Well, you're looking at somebody who has backed. You've done it. Yeah, you've done it. Um, We ran into a Dairy Queen one time. Um, (laughs) That door's been replaced three times now. Um, Last time I got ripped off by the crane. Any lifetime warranties out there for nothing for ripping the garage door off the frame? There's no warranties (laughs) that I can get. Um, The good news is, is that. I have the people on speed dial. So I just call them like, bro, please send somebody out here. And they're like, be there in 15 minutes. Like they know it's a guaranteed sale and, and I'm going to pay. 
because it's just it's ridiculous. It Have is, you on speed dial at this point? It They're is like, ridiculous. Oh, they need. They, they need know another. what door to come to. Yeah. They don't even <laughs> think about. It. They know what door to come to. I got one, two, three, four, five, six garage doors in They're here. They're like, this guy's calling great day today, guys. We, like, we, hey, have, we, we have a project. Sale. <laughs> we made another sale because it's like, I don't know what it is, but like, and it just costs so much money to replace it does. this garage door. People don't realize how time. much money until you have to replace something like that. Every I didn't time. realize myself how much it costs to replace a garage door, especially a tall one. Yeah. Especially a tall one. Which is a 20-foot garage door. Even the panels themselves. Yeah. So I'm like, oh no! <laughs> I'm like, come on! I I just I watched him do it too. I watched him do it, and it was just like, oh well. I was like, how I got through that? I worked for another five hours after that. It was like four o'clock, and I was like, I'm gonna work until like nine o'clock at night, and I'm just gonna work really hard. And if I'm tired, I have less energy to put into not liking my day because I'll be so wore out and accomplish so many things during those next five hours that I'm like, ah, whatever. So I completed the upstairs renovations. We had had a fire sprinkler put in the conference room. And so finished that. I was wondering what's going on all, up there. All, all, the, all the clothes hanging back up, sorted, um, doing all that kind of stuff. And it sounded, like it sounded like an earthquake whenever I walked into that office. Not anymore. Like I got it done. It's done. And that was another thing. Like they wanted to wait till next week, and I was like, I'm not waiting till next week. I had a box truck um, explode a tire out in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, of course, where there's nobody, and uh, they limped it back here after they switched the tires. Like there's dual tires, and they dropped it off, and they're like, "We'll figure it out on Monday or Tuesday." And I go, "No, take it right now. Well, take that, it right now." That makes me happy. I wasn't the only one having a rough Friday. Yeah. I was like, take it right now. When it comes Tuesday, y'all not working because I'm going to be fixing a box truck. You guys will have no work. So if you fix it today and you pick it up on Tuesday, you can still go out and make money. And they're like, okay. And then I got a text message from the operations manager. He's like, I told him not to do blah, blah, that, blah, blah. I'm like, no, we, we do stuff now. We don't wait and like, it'll take care of it. No, I'll just do it. You know, go take it now. Go do a fix stuff now. Fix the garage door now. Don't try to limp it through or do anything. I was like, I want the box truck fixed. I want this fixed. I want the upstairs fixed. I want it done now, immediately. Like, that's another thing with me is I just, I'm American. I want it now. Like, I want not necessarily the instant gratification for everything, but, like, for work stuff. If there's a possibility it can get done today, let's just do it. Work 12 that's, hours. That's I don't how care. I, that's how I am with my yeah. leads. That's why I went back to that one. I'm like... I want this now. I don't want to wait until Tuesday. I want to have something set up for next week. You know, yeah. I want to have a great week. Now, granted, you know, I'm pretty confident that, you know, I, I can still have a great week next week. You know, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. But yeah. it you makes know, it easier when you got something yeah, in, the, oh, in the chamber. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. And you know, it, it definitely builds momentum into the next week. But you know, days like Fridays happen. Ooh, I know what I want to talk to you about next. Okay, I'm hiring. We have like six or seven reps now. Um, and that creates a certain amount of opportunities for you guys, okay? Um, I'm hiring two to three more starting Tuesday, and that's going to open up more more spaces and availability. What does that do for the mindsets of you, the team, things like that, when there's more? Is that more like crap? No. Like, is that... Are you talking about reps? Reps. Oh, that's just more motiva motivating. Motivating. Yeah. Because, like, we for have, you, you have so many, like, let's say there's four spots every day that you have to fill up. You have 20 people that are trying to fill up those four night leads every day. Well, you know, I've had some decent weeks. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're talking 20, 30 leads in a week, and you're talking about, you know, within the next 48 hours, which I consider the best leads, the fresh, you know, they're, it's fresh in their mind. And it's 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 faster for us to be able to go out there and you know who we are, why they why we're there, and what we're what we we can help them with. In that regard, it, it's motivating because when there's more slots to fill up for next day or the day after, you know there's guys in here who, you know, it, it can be discouraging when you have on a Thursday, and usually things don't fill up. Until, you know, the next two days yeah. on a third, like, let's say it's a Wednesday, you know, 
Thursday and Friday, you know, those are the days that are supposed to be full. But when you have a Monday evening slot already filled up on a on a on a Thursday, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like that's already full. Like right. I can't set anything for those time slots. Yeah. So it's it's so definitely it's only good if I have more spots open for new. The people. only way it's bad is if those slots aren't filled. Yeah. It's the only way it's bad. And with it becoming, you know, there's seasons where better seasons than others within the industry, within certain certain things, you know. But obviously, we're a four seasons company. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're gonna work year year in a year out. The only way it's bad is if those slots don't get full. So you know, you know, there's guys out there, you know, who all they want to do is fill slots. You know, we have competitions yes. of filling slots. You know, right now we have a crazy competition, you know, on a hundred point scale of beats. You didn't know about that? Mm-hmm. What? So for every 100 points, it's like when you get a lead, you get a point, it confirms it's two, or demos, it's like four or something like that. For every 10,000 in sales, it's 10 points. Every 100 points scored, you get a pair of beats. So that's one of our competitions. We did a competition last year. So if you sell 100,000, you get 10 pairs of beats? If you sell 100,000, no, it's 100 points. 10 points times, oh, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe my math is off. If you get 10 points for $10,000. Yeah. Okay. And you saw it, that's one. So if you get 100, So that's 100 you points. Get, you get, you yeah, get, it's 100 points. You get 10 of those sales. So if you get 100,000 of sales, that's, that's 100 points. You guarantee points. Beats headphones. I won but three, you, by the way. You won three so far? <laughs> I did. Jesus. The mo- the you months. already got it? No, no, but oh, I man. had over 300 points. But... It's cool little competitions like that, you know, where, where it's like, how many slots can we fill? Like, how many slots can we fill? And we're just like, our team is hungry where we're just looking yeah, to fill no, slots. Yeah, the team is hungry. I just kind of wondered what the, the generally the, the sales thing is like, well, now we're going to get less leads per person. And I can understand that. And so, you know, but that just raises the, I think that every time I do that, it raises the competition. It does. And I think it's, you can't be in sales without competition. Cannot. You cannot. I mean, we have, we have, uh, I have, I can't tell you how many times, you know, guys have come up to me and be like, coming for you. I'm coming for you. Yeah. Or like, you know, I'm, I'm going to get there to your level and I'm going to write more leads than you. And I'm just like, I love, I mean, that's great. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I can't let that happen. No, it's not happening. <laughs> I can't let that happen. happen. I'm golden boy right now. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but you know, that's what makes it fun. And that's what, that's what makes each other successful. You know, that's what that that's what helps us grow. And I think the same thing for, you know, the 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 reps who go and you know, sell sell the roofs and things like that. Like you can't be in sales if you're not competitive. If you don't have a competitive edge. And you know, you look at somebody not saying, you know, I want to be that person or anything like that, but we look at each other like I'm going to I can't let you beat me this week or you know, I want to be I want to So like Ryan for example, who was on a previous podcast, he came into a meeting when we were having a meeting and He's like, who are the top two guys this week? And me and Tyler raised raised our hands. And and uh, he looked and he was like, well, whoever finishes the worst out of you two cleans the bathroom. And we're like, what the heck? And I looked at Ryan. And I was like, well, whoever the top two sales reps who finished the worst has to clean the other bathroom. He's like, okay, we got to serve as a deal. Little competitions like that. And Tyler looked at me and he's like, I'm not cleaning no bathroom. And, you know, I don't think the, the it actually held up or anything like that. I don't know. I never – he just came back from Texas. Yeah, I said, no, it, it didn't. I sent Ryan on a uh, Christian boot camp thing. Um, so that's going to be – if I don't do a podcast tomorrow, it'll be the next podcast um, after that where he's going to tell me all the things that happen. I mean, it's like military boot camp plus Christian-based learning So and leadership. And so I'm super excited to hear about all that. So when he comes back from that, maybe I'll make him clean the bathrooms or whatever. He's, he's <laughs> I don't gone. think anybody has uh, upheld that, but just that little little seed in the back in our heads just made us work a little bit harder, you know, on the competitive Not edge. Not everybody's motivated by money. Can we talk about that for a minute? No, a hundred percent. I've offered a uh, thousand bucks to a, for a for a thousand knocks, and I can almost get nobody to subscribe to that because it's like really really hard i've done it a couple times in the past where they make it to like two three hundred and they get like five deals from it or something like that in the first three days and they're like i'm not doing the rest of the week um and it's like 
they're not motivated by money every time. Like just the consistent money to make a thousand cash a week. They're not motivated by that. They're motivated by these beats competitions. They're motivated by cleaning the bathrooms. They're motivated by something like that. They're not motivated. I've 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 tried to motivate Derek Banks to get a car. I was like, I'll buy you a car. Like you've been here six years. I'll buy you a car, bro. You just have to do X. And he's like, nah, I don't care. I'm like, you don't care? I'll buy you a car. And he's like, I don't care. I'm like, how do I motivate this guy? <laughs> Some people are motivated with different things. Yeah. And you're right. Not everybody is motivated with money. But that's a cool thing about sales too, you know, is it has me personally, it has allowed me to have more time freedom for myself and my personal life and things like that. Talking about, we we keep bringing up vacations and little work trips yeah. and things like that. And, you know, it's just a completely different schedule. You know, some days, you know, mentally tougher than others for sure, but it's different. And yeah. I, I, I love it. Do you like sleeping in? I do like sleeping in. Yeah. This job ruins a lot of people in the sales or the or the canvassing slide because you don't have to wake up before 10 o'clock if you don't want to. You just don't have to. You can't if you want to. And that can create bad habits sometimes. For True. Some, for they, some. They have a tough time going some, doing that. Some else. people, you know, uh, that work better in, in like a, a strict system where you have to be up at X time, you have to clock in at this time, and you have to clock out at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's a set cycle. And sometimes with Not sales, me. you don't have that set cycle. No. It's a little different. Yeah. Those guys are, you know, I have reps that don't get home until 9, 10 o'clock at night most nights. Yeah. You know, but. Same same, same with same with us, you know. Yeah. Sometimes we don't get home till late. Depends yeah. on how far we go out, how far we're willing to go out. Sometimes we push the boundaries a little bit, you know. Oh, Zachary. When we get home at 10, 11 o'clock, it's like, what are you doing? Just out there, out there working, you know, and, you know, if, if you're having one of those days where you're in something like this and you have a bad day and let's say you're working at one thirty to 7.30 and you go home at 5.30 and you can definitely work until 7.30 when everybody's kind of getting home and things like that. And if you're limiting your chances of success, you're ultimately hurting yourself on that train that you're riding to get to where you want to go. You have to maximize your opportunity. Whatever yes. opportunity that you're in, you have to maximize that. Correct. So whatever whatever opportunity you only have that twenty. So true. Whatever whatever opportunity you have in a day, and you want to accomplish something in a day, whether with whatever you're working at, you have to make sure within that day, within those set hours that you are to be doing what you're doing to maximize the opportunity. For sure. For sure. To be successful. Um. Closing thoughts, anything, other questions you want to ask me, anything like that? I don't have any questions off the top of my fine. head. We can do it. We can do it again. When you see other podcasts or when you do, you have a, if you have a week where you're like, dude, we need to talk about this on the podcast, something like that. Yeah. You can always come back on. We can do one, you know, at the I'm end excited of the to see the future podcast with, with some other guys. Oh too. yeah. No. And then I'm going to get some more people that are outside of this industry and stuff to do more. I'm going to try to get some influencers and stuff on here as well. Um, just that slow grind of, you know, getting viewerships and getting content for the social media platforms that we offer. Um, and it seems to be working. Like we're being pretty successful with all this stuff. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. Um, also, it's an opportunity for me to chill someone for two hours, you know? Absolutely. Like, and then at least we're getting something out of I it. I guess my final thought would just be, if you're out there and you are in a system right now or in a situation where you no longer believe in it and you're still there and you're grinding in it, but you don't believe in it, hop ship. Yeah. Hop ship. Move on to something else that you can put your belief into. You're going to find much better efforts if you put effort into that than where you're at currently if you no longer believe in that. I like it. I like it. Wisdom from Zach Kane. Um, again, if you have any other questions, if you want to see us cover other topics, anything like that, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, all of the YouTube, all of the social media platforms um, that we're on, please comment, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff, and we'll continue to cover things that you're interested with and give you insights into the company and the day-to-day -day operations. Zach, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been, it's been great. Please remain